At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. As it turned out, the grave danger never really left, and more than a decade later has taken on a new form, with cities like Mosul already in the hands of the militant group Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, or ISIS. As Washington weighs options for a U.S. role in Iraq, experts warn now is the time to remember the cost that's already been incurred. Ben Jensen is a professor at the Marine Corps Command and Staff College. When you think about the lessons of Iraq, remember, it's become one of those anchors. Regardless of where you fall in America's political spectrum, right, left, it's still an anchor about how costly foreign wars can be. The cost can be measured in many ways. In dollars, estimates hover around $1.7 trillion, plus an additional $490 billion owed to war veterans. Expenses which are expected to grow to $6 trillion over the next few decades when you factor in interest. In American lives lost nearly 4,500 troops. And when you count Iraqi civilian deaths, it's believed to be more than 600,000. Still, some in Washington are calling for the U.S. once again to get involved in Iraq. If Baghdad falls, if the central government falls, a disaster awaits us of monumental proportions. For Jensen, all factors should be weighed. The United States dominates in the air, in the land, and at the sea, but it's not enough. He says Iraq also brought forth another casualty of war, an immense loss by the U.S. in reputation and influence. The U.S. lost influence because it showed, similar to what happened in Vietnam, although arguably they're very different wars, that Goliath could be beaten. And with veterans' disability, medical care, and other long-term mental and emotional tolls. A reminder that the cost of war doesn't end when the fighting stops. In Washington, I'm Christine Frizzell reporting.